All right, man, talk to talk. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock show, man. Thank y'all for being here with me. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Really appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it. So today I want to be talking about uh, J. Cole and Drake. Um, should they be friends still? Or are they two, uh, two, are these two guys, two snakes that really been fooling us for the longest? You know what I'm saying? So before I get into that, you know, I got to get my spill. This is Talk to Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies. Sexy ladies. Put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links is on the screen, man. Thank y'all for all the donations. I'll be waking up in the morning. I'll be seeing donations. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. I love y'all for that. Thank you for all the donations. It called me the hidden gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 13,000 in a million by Monday. Over 11,000 subscribers. And uh, yeah, man, let me know where you're from too, man. Um, really appreciate it. So we're going to get into this clip, man. I'm going to come back and discuss. You know what it is, so let's go. <laughs> All right, so you already know links is going to be in the description, man. Professor Lex, let's go. All right, all right, let's get into it. So I already did a video on J. Cole and the Port Antonio record, and I expressed some concerns about the lyrics in that record already. But some more information has come across the desk and has been uh, highlighted. And first, we're going to start with the cover art and the fact that Port Antonio is where Drake and Cole were at some point. Maybe they were this is when they were working on uh, the songs they have together on Drake's record and probably on Cole's record as well, which is why he released Port Antonio as an apology record to Drake, which. So let me get this right. Is this Cole and Drake? That is Cole and Drake. Holy shit. <laughs> Yo. That's Cole and Drake. Yo, that, yo, that changes a lot for me, to be honest with y'all. That's Cole and Drake. I didn't even know that. I thought it was just a, a random guy or two random people. I know people probably like, well, how you not know that that was Cole and Drake? And I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. There's no real problem with that other than the subs that can be construed as pointed at Kendrick Lamar. That is a problem. And it's a problem that's getting bigger because now as with the status that you all have, people begin to talk about their experiences and we get into Wayno, uh, shout out to Wayno, very good hip hop uh, journalist. And he has some things to reveal. Uh, he hosted Dreamville. And he talked about his experience there this past year. Let's just listen to that clip right quick. Y'all Dreamville niggas, man, y'all gas cold up. Cause listen, I was having sideline conversations with a lot of the homies. And a lot of my Dreamville homies was basically saying that Kendrick was, you know, that he's overrated and that um, what has he done? And I'm like, yo, are y'all serious? So all this camaraderie that y'all made it seem like with the TDE and in, in Dreamville and how they was locked in and this, that, and the third, this is all fake. And it bugged me out because I couldn't believe that at the point that it's one thing to say, okay, Kendrick then says something, we gonna rap at him. But it's another thing for like the homies around, you know, that's around Cole to be saying shit like, yeah, man, like he ain't never, or he ain't this, or don't nobody listen to that. And I'm like, yo, y'all dead serious? So. Crazy, bro. See, it only takes one record to reveal who you really are, man. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold y'all. I lost a lot of respect for J. Cole. I really did, man. I lost a lot of respect. The more I start to research and the more I start to learn, damn, J. Cole. Damn, man. You let me down, man. Just like how you let Nas down, you let me down too, man. Damn, J. Cole. Damn, bro. I always took that stance. And this is, when I said what I said, this was before J. Cole did his apology. Now, none of that has to necessarily mean anything, right? 
There can just be a couple of loose cannons in the camp talking nonsense. But however, J. Cole, would you be an elite? Nah, that's not Dom. You can't slide over that. Ain't no loose cannons in the camp. J. Cole should have had that corrected. You're like, nah, we like... You can't... You can't slander the man and then, and then diss him. And then he even said it. He even said it. Some of my homies were saying... He admitted it. He essentially admitted it by saying some of my homies were saying, nah, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. So he kind of admitted that his homies really don't with Kendrick. Is that a reach? I don't know. I don't think so, but still in all. The camp, the camp needs to kind of be in line with what you are doing and uh, what move you tend to make, right? However, many people have now pointed out there's a video out there. They pointed out this kind of passive aggressive behavior in the past and how you kind of have you kind of have a tendency to punch people and blame it on somebody else or say you didn't mean to punch them, right? You were swinging at somebody else. So you were swinging at something else. So you were just, it was a fly. It was a gnat on your forehead. I just punched you in the nose because I was trying to get the gnat. So that bit of information combined with this now definitely being like some kind of apology record to Drake or trying to smooth things out with him, which again, like I said, there's no problem with that. But at the same time, people are going to perceive it as you are now siding with Drake. They're going to perceive it that way. And you all both, you and Drake both need better PR people or managers. Some, you all need somebody around you, some real people around you to give you all better advice on how to move. And you all are too reactive to social media. Yeah, man, I thought J. Cole was above all this. And turns out he's just as he's just as bad as Drake, if not worse. When it comes to social media, he puts it to the pen. He puts pen to the paper and he does it. And he brings, he calls stuff out. Doesn't necessarily mean that he's calling everybody out. It just means he's expressing his feelings. There's nothing wrong with expressing your feelings. But when you're expressing your feelings to strangers, people who don't really know you, and you and you standing on all, all, all ten toes in front of strangers who don't know you, it just sounds kind of weird to me. All right. I always view Dreamville as like TDE East, right? You guys kind of built the same, or it seems like you all follow their lead as far as building your record company. Not saying that you're copying them or anything like that. The artists are different, but they're in the same lane from a creative standpoint. Honestly, without both record companies, I wouldn't be that interested in music. You guys are both kind of carrying a torch for real hip hop, in my opinion. Uh, so to hear that you all are hating on TDE and Kendrick is disappointing and weak. Now, I understand that TDE probably doesn't do. All right, so let's look at this. So Dreamville and TDE. Right. Dreamville and TDE. So you got. I'm going to go with Scissor. Jid, yeah, he's super fire. Come on, bro. Schoolboy Q. Stop playing. Come on, man. Sir, stop playing. Kendrick, come on, man. Absol, come on, man. J Rock. So some of these dudes, uh, these dudes are fire right here. They're fire. I mean, J. Cole got some good dudes over there. I ain't going to lie. You got some good dudes. You know what I'm saying? But I'm hearing that Jed and J. Cole, something's going on with them. I don't know. That's what I heard, but I don't know if that's true or not. Here we go. As many features as the industry and other artists would like them to do, right? But that's their prerogative. You know, get it how you live. They, they To me, they set the example of success in the first place, right? Just from a production standpoint. The reason why Kendrick Lamar and CDE and SZA and all that, the reason why their records stand out is because the way they produce, like they produce their records. There's a difference between just making a beat and then somebody just writing to the beat and then just recording that as into making and writing a complete song with instrumentation, with real musicians, the way TDE does. Yes, it costs more money and I understand all those things about how to, how to record, but at the same time, 
if you want a certain kind of results and a certain kind of cachet with the fans, it depends on what you put into it. As a producer, I always compare the reason Dr. Dre and Kanye and Timbaland, the reason they're like elevated the way they are is because the way they go about making sure that the beats are top quality, right? You know, they go get choirs, they go get these brass sections, they go make sure everything's lies, live. In yeah, Black Hippies. I wish they had did an album, man. I really do wish they had did an album. I know they got a couple songs together, but I wish they had did an album. Instrumentation. They go over the records over and over again. So to hate on TDE for the accolades that they get, you just have to put in the same effort into creating the records that they do. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't hear many people doing that across the industry. Let's just be honest about it. And so why, why be mad? You know what I mean? But I'm starting to think that maybe J. Cole and this kind of double talk that he likes to do is him kind of being a little sneaky and a little snaky behind the scenes and not really expressing his true feelings, right? His public face is very, very different from what he feels in private. And of course, it's going to come out in the lyrics, right? But it makes me look at some of these lyrics very differently. Uh, like here in the comments, uh, shout out to Gentle Expressions uh, in the comments who mentioned some of the uh, lyrics in evil ways and definitely a seven minute drill. Of course, that was a diss record. But the evil ways, the way the song ended, the lyrics that J. Cole ended the song on are very interesting. Let's put them up here right quick. Okay, raise it to his face and he ain't need a shave. I stay out of beef so Ninja's DNA get rearranged. I'm with Drizzy in Atlanta. So many hitters that Ninja, with that Ninja, they could be the Braves. Young Angel going through his demon phase. Hard to blame, Lord knows the game can be depraved. Scary hours undefeated. Y'all should be afraid. Who was y'all? Who's DNA rearranged? What, like, what are we doing, J. Cole? Now with the new information. Yeah, that's, yeah. I got loyalty and royalty inside my DNA. Yeah. I hate to tell y'all this. I hate to break it to y'all. But J. Cole is a doodle ball. J. Cole's a doodle ball. He's a doodle ball. J. Cole is a doodle ball, y'all. Damn. Hurt me to the hurt me to the core. Shit hurt me to the core, man. I ain't gonna lie. Shit really hurt me to the core. It calls a doodle ball. That sounds like you knew something was happening. Now, here's the thing. Kendrick mentioned Drake calling him for some kind of feature. Everybody assumes it's for first person shooter. None of this has to be true, but you have to understand how the way you all are moving makes you look in the public eye now. It makes these lyrics have a different meaning than everybody took them for, you know, just general lyrics. You know, what beef, when you say beef, like what beef was going on at the time that you know what I'm saying you stay out you're staying out of so people's DNA shout out to Kendrick Lamar doesn't get it rearranged what does that what does that mean now you know what I mean this explains the like that verse and the feature on that future and Metro Boomin album and how Kendrick was contacted to be on the album or asked to be on the album however that happened J. Cole what? <laughs> this 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 makes you look bad. If y'all at Dreamville Fest mad at Kendrick for the like that verse, and all of a sudden TDE ain't all that, and and what has Kendrick done? Like what? He didn't. It's not like he came at Cole specifically on that record. But again, that's crazy for them to do that. That's crazy for this whole thing with people hating on Kendrick. This has to be hating on his talent. I'm telling you, man. A lot of you dudes could never reach his level. And y'all could rap. Don't get me wrong. People could rap. But you can't do what he do. You know what I'm saying? A lot of y'all, y'all just good at just rapping. That's it. Just good at just rapping. 
if the sentiment is already that maybe they think that they're better than everybody else and Kendrick, because he won his awards, he don't want to do features with people no more and things like that. I know how things go right behind the scenes and people get a little upset about, you know, maybe a handshake, you know, yeah, man, I got you on the feature and then the people don't do it. They don't come through and you counting on that money. I get it. But at the same time, that's the business. It's not, that's not uncommon at all. But what I will say is, and I'm gonna get to another issue with Drake and the whole eternity and the daughter thing and bringing that back up when that's kind of, like, all of these issues are like was dead two or three months ago. I mean, for real, only people who are just have nothing to do with themselves are keeping these things going. But Drake using his troll academics to bring it back up because he's about to release an album. Who's doing the clout chasing now? Are you all trying to bring this battle back up to clout chase Kendrick's supposedly upcoming album, whether it be him, TDE, they're coming with something, right? Are you all trying to clout chase that to boost off of Kendrick, to boost your own projects? I definitely think that that's what they're doing. I think that, I think that academics, Adam 22, and all of these different Aiden Ross, and all of these different people, I really believe that they think they work for Drake. I think Drake has manipulated them to the point that they really feel like they are part of Team OVO. And they're going to do whatever it takes to, like, this is what crazy. This is what's crazy about this whole thing, right? In fact, I'm gonna let him finish and I'm gonna explain because it's almost done. Because that's what it seems like to me now. We're throwing all this out there. None of this has to be true. It could all be speculation. It doesn't look like it to me. I'm just gonna be honest. It seems like you all were planning some form of attack, and Kendrick kind of saw it coming because he understands the sub. This is better than we do. You know, I hate when you sneak this. If I catch flight, it's gonna be direct. That means all of those lines are starting to mean a lot more now as time goes on. And you all are fumbling over how to handle this when you really should just leave it alone. So, J. Cole, you have earned white belt level ninja status along with Drake. Now, Drake earned it months ago when he couldn't get over the battle, right? As well as his other behaviors. I'm not even going to get into that. I don't want to get into that right now. But yeah, this is unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Still great artists, both of you, but corny individuals. Uh, let's let's try to let's try to tighten up the team, man. Because Dreamville, a lot of talented artists over there. Uh, this kind of thing shouldn't be coming out and going on behind the scenes, man. There's no need for this. But anyway, let me know what y'all think in the comments below, man. Uh, click the link for that Port of Antonio uh, review. One thing y'all need to understand about people like J. Cole and Drake, especially J. Cole. I think a lot of people don't understand the word manipulator and what it really means and how people consider this to be a master manipulator move. J. Cole, he had a lot of people fooled for a long time and you can consider him a master manipulator because people really believed that he was a cut from a different cloth, like he was a different type of guy, a different breed of man when it comes to this type, these type of things. Come to find out he's just as bad or even worse than Drake because he, he is a wolf in sheep clothing. He do appear to be something that he's not. You know what I'm saying? And you would think that this guy is, is just virtuous, really good guy because he daps you up and he smiles all the time and he talks like he's really you know has a a a, a, a monotone of believability you know what i'm saying in his voice but he's a fraud you know what i'm saying and i hate to say it it really really hurts me to say that j cole is a fraud it really does because for the longest time i've really looked at him differently from the other two. I looked at Kendrick as advancement, someone who does something different for hip hop, a guy who is willing to die for this shit. 
You know what I'm saying? J. Cole, I felt like he played the, mid, the middle very well. He balanced it out through, through Drake and he balanced it out through Kendrick. So that's why I always put him in the middle of the two. But now that I do my research and I see that this guy is, he's, 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 a, he is, He's he's one of those guys, man. He's one of those doodle balls. He's he's a I don't know what to even say because I'm kind of like I don't know this nigga, so I ain't really hurt like that. But I'm saying like when it comes to his image, I just don't look at him the same no more. And him releasing this album, I'm a hip hop you know fan, so I'm gonna listen. But now I'm gonna listen, and it's gonna be one of those things where you kind of listening, you scanning it now. You're not listening to enjoy. Now you're scanning, and now you got to go back and, and research all the things he has said and he has done uh, subliminally towards Kendrick. And it's so crazy how you would say these things and then people would look at you crazy. Now everything Kendrick Lamar has been saying this whole time has been real. It's been true. And we've been sitting here really thinking that maybe Kendrick was tripping. Some of y'all was sitting here thinking that. Maybe he's tripping. Now, now y'all see. Now y'all see on full display that Kendrick was not tripping. It's crazy. But either way, man, y'all have yourself a good afternoon. Six o'clock show coming up. All right, man. See y'all. Peace. Bye. Love y'all, man. <laughs>